Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Experimental Cataclysm, the show where we talk about recent changes to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. And I already know this video is going to be late, so apologies for that. We were getting back on schedule, and now I'm backsliding again, uh, again due to health issues. But anyway, now regarding our last show where we talked about several bugs in Experimental, I am happy to report that all of them have now been resolved. Their issues have all been closed, so now the vision issues and the hyper-spawning of enemies should no longer be a problem. Thanks to everyone who worked on getting that resolved, as well as the people who chimed in to say like, yes, this is an issue for me, here's what I think is going on, and etc. And of course, shout outs to the people who actually did them. I don't have their names in front of me, sorry about that. Anyway, getting into the show proper, first up today from Lisp COC, we've got a change that is good, but will also <laughs> make some of you angry. So very simply, this adds a key bind for inserting that can be used from the main game screen. Previously, this required you to go into the inventory, open the whatever this side screen is called with the expanded list of options and then choose the insert command. So that's the good part. You can actually now do this with one button press instead of going through all of those hoops in order to do this. Now the bad part is that they made this command use the lowercase v key as a key bind which was previously used for displaying your morale. Changing key binds is always one of the most frustrating, obnoxious, and completely avoidable changes that we get in the game. You have changed a key bind that we had in the game for literally the entirety of my career, you could have added this as unbound by default. You could have scrounged up a free key or you could have made it so that the key bind existed but did not change existing key binds for players who already had V bound to the morale menu. And instead you overrode a command that we're all familiar with which was a completely avoidable thing here so I'm, I'm pretty irritated by this. Now all of that said you can still access the morale command by going into the character menu with the at symbol key and then press M for morale. And look, probably many of you will end up using the insert command a lot more than you use the morale command, so I think you can argue that this is actually okay. But seriously, please, please don't mess with my keybinds. You should never, ever overwrite an existing keybind for a player. I just find that to be so frustrating, as do other people. Anyway, Rage ended. I almost dropped an F-bomb in there. I'm trying to, to swear less in these videos. And then moving on here today, we have another insert-related change, also from Lisp COC, which added bulk time savings when inserting or removing many items. Now, there were two examples given in the PR, and the first one was using salt. To previously insert 1,000 salt, it took 21 minutes and 40 seconds. However, now that there are bulk time savings, this changed to a mere 11 seconds. This is an enormous reduction and in the context of salt, it actually makes perfect sense. Most likely you are just dumping a container of salt into another container, which of course is very easy. However, the second example used in the PR is 100 apples, and previously inserting 100 apples would take 2 minutes and 21 seconds. However, now it only takes 12 seconds, and the problem I see is that if you were to insert 100 apples into a backpack or whatever, it probably would take you a lot longer than 12 seconds. I really don't think the batch time savings make a lot lot of sense in this context. I have no idea how long it would take me to move 100 apples, but I guarantee it would be longer than 12 seconds. So mostly here I'm just letting you know that this exists and that inserting items should take substantially less time now. I am highly suspect of the speed buff for things like apples. I don't feel that that makes sense for those items, but beyond that I don't have any thoughts, so there you go, moving on. Next up today from Karim Baba G, we've got a message related to when merchants will restock. Using merchants to trade for goods is becoming more and more popular in the game. You will often see people on Discord, they'll talk about the value of trading or they will gather items specifically for trading. And this is a relatively new thing. Historically, we haven't had very many merchants and they usually didn't have very high value goods to trade for and were pretty random and, and kind of garbage. And now one of the most common questions we get is when will my merchant restock? And this PR sought to address this problem. So in order to test this, I headed off to Rubik to see what they had on offer. After trading, you will see the text, quote, have you anything more back there, which is the dialogue you need to choose in order to get that display. Now this is a little different for each different merchant, but that's what it is for Rubik. And when I selected this conversation topic, I seg faulted, so that's a lot of fun. So I booted things up again and tried again and I seg faulted again. So yeah, getting 
finding a reliable seg fault when you select a particular piece of dialogue is, is very bad. Although no issues were listed in this PR, when I did ask people on Discord, they confirmed that this is an issue with that particular dialogue, so unfortunately I wasn't able to test this change. Based on what I see in the PR, my only real feedback is that I don't like that this dialogue only appears after trading. I think it should be available at all times from like the main dialogue screen. Beyond that, I was not able to test this because of the seg fault, so sorry about that. The pictures in the PR, it looked like they were displayed in turns or seconds, but hopefully that was resolved and we get like a more reasonable time frame, like, oh, come back in two days. But yeah, I don't really have thoughts on this because I wasn't able to test it, so... There you go. I guess don't select it right now. You'll get a seg fault. I don't know what else to tell you about it. Next up from Evan Bolster, we've got the ability to pick up grappling hooks or step ladders from the level below you. Now this is the person who made all the climbing changes that we discussed in the last show, all of which are now merged, I believe. Now this PR made it so that as long as the ladder or grappling hook was deployed only one Z level below you, you can pick it up. You know, and it's days like this where I sat down to record and it was like dead silent and it's like, it's like almost 8 p.m. I thought like, oh, it's a, it's a good time to record. And now I can hear my drunk neighbors yelling. I can hear the dog up the street howling because my drunk neighbors are yelling and I just really don't have time to not record this. So apologies if you hear dogs howling in the background very loudly. I, I'm so sorry. I can't do anything about that. Anyway, uh, I've lost where I was. Uh, the option to pick up the ladder or grappling hook was added to the ledge menu that we discussed previously and it allows you to pull the item up to your Z level where it will be deposited at your feet. Now this is a very nice change as you previously could only retrieve these items if you were on the same Z level as they were and that didn't really make sense. Obviously if you threw a grappling hook up to a roof you would be able to retrieve it from the roof and if a ladder is tall enough for you to easily climb to the next level then it's probably tall enough that you could pick it up or at least in many situations you could reach it. Maybe, you know, the ladder retrieval would obviously be much more difficult than grabbing a grappling hook, but I don't hate that this extends to ladders as well. Next up today from Guardian DLL, we've got a handful of vehicle tweaks, but the one I wanted to call out specifically was the addition of heaters and air conditioners to many vehicles. So essentially every vehicle sold in the United States in modern times has a vehicle heater and an air conditioner. It doesn't matter civilian vehicles to trucks or vans that require a CDL, even most tractors have some form of climate control. In the game, however, basically none of them did, or all of them didn't have it, I don't really know. Well now, Guardian DLL has added these vehicle parts to many of the vehicles that you're going to find in the game. I personally think they should be on literally every vehicle, but you know, hey, it's a good start. Things to note here is that they currently can't be uninstalled or installed, only repaired, which I think is sort of horrendous, but I also don't know what would be required to make that possible, so whatever. Now I could see this being an issue on player made vehicles like the difficulty I believe heaters like use the engines heat and if you're making a vehicle almost from scratch it'd be a little tricky to make that work depending on how you build it I have no idea how you how you work out those issues but yeah that's all I think they should be on everything but this is a good start considering how few if any vehicles had those parts previously next up today from Mari Marigi we've got an improvement to how pets handle stairs anyone who's had pets in the game knows that getting them to follow you up or down stairs has always been very difficult. They mostly will not path through Z levels, which made it pretty annoying when you wanted to keep them like confined safely in the basement or whatever. Well, now this should be a lot easier. Apparently pets will now check on the player's last seen position and move to that location. And then a lot of times we'll make the Z level transition. This makes it much easier to get them to follow you. Although I do think it raises some other small issues. There are situations where you don't actually want them to follow you. And it seems like this will make it hard to prevent prevent that unless you tie them down. And of course, as I said, you still have the option of tying them down or closing them in a closet or something if you want to prevent them from moving around too much. So I think overall, this is a pretty great change. I rather like this. So yeah. Next up today, we've got some new Halloween costumes and masks that were added to the game. Now, some of these are holiday spawns, which means they will only appear as zombie drops during Halloween if you have special events enabled. Now, you can find this in your settings menu under MISC options. It's called special event spawns. And some of the newly added items will also appear year round. They'll spawn in like cardboard boxes in basements, uh, just as miscellaneous filler. Now, there were a variety of masks and costumes added. For example, there's a plague 
doctor mask and a set of robes that go along with it. Now for the changes from Terminator, they did not actually add new items, but instead they set up costumes using existing in-game items that will spawn on zombies specifically. So during Halloween, with events enabled, you will find, for example, a zombie dressed as a butler, or a mummy, or a vampire. Now I don't have much to say about this, but we are approaching Halloween, and I figured I would mention it. Halloween's one of the best holidays. Moving on, next up today from Aaron, we've got a change that makes it so weapon techniques only activate if you have a certain melee skill. So previously, if you had a weapon with a technique, I believe you could just use them at any time. The triggering of them is random, of course, but there was no requirement that I'm aware of in order to use them. So if you grabbed that tonfa, and even if you had a zero in your melee skill and have never held a weapon in your life, it would randomly trigger the rapid strike ability. Now this PR made it so that different techniques require different levels of melee in order to activate. Oh man, okay, so the rapid strike technique will now require a melee skill of two, and sweep attacks will require a melee skill of three, and disarm requires a melee of four. Blocking abilities for weapons were unaffected by this, so the inherent blocking techniques are still active regardless of your skill level. Now this is going to have a pretty major impact on the early game, I think. In my opinion, grabbing something with rapid strike was like an excellent way to start your run, and sweep also is very powerful in the early game. Sometimes you would be able to stun lock enemies by just sweeping them over and over and over. Now getting to melee one is not actually a big deal. There's a training recipe for that. You can do that very quickly. Taking it to level 2 for rapid strike and brutal strike is also not that difficult but it, it, it does require some fighting but it's not a whole lot and getting it to 4 if you want disarm that's that's going to take quite a bit of melee combat to actually get to skill level 4. Now that said I think disarm is actually like one of the least valuable techniques so I don't think getting to 4 is mandated for every character you definitely don't need that. To me the important threshold here is 2 so that I can have rapid strike in the early game and getting sweep at level 3 I I would probably have a quarter staff or whatever before then, so I do think there will be a period where you have the weapon but you can't use the technique. And I do think this incentivizes maybe you take melee 2 at character creation to sort of get around that difficulty. Now ultimately I think this change makes sense, although I do suspect there will be people who will be irritated and complain about this, but that's really all I have to say about it. Next up today from A Chancy, we've got an audit of practical versus theoretical skill usage. So basically the idea here was to check various activities in the game and make sure they're using the right skill type, either practical or theoretical. So for example, foraging food in the wilderness, that is something that relies more on player knowledge than hands-on experience, and therefore it will now use your theoretical skill. Now I don't have any real comments for this, but I will provide a link to the PR in the description down below if you're so interested. Now the PR contains a list of what activities were audited and which kind of skill applies to it, as well as some of the rationale for the choices they made. And then finally today from Carol, we've got some more adjustments to ferals. Now most of the changes here are buffs, even when things were nerfed in this PR, they were also buffed in general. So for example, their rock throw ability now uses a strength of 8 instead of 7, but the throwing skill was dropped by one level. Now this is an example of a relatively minor change that took place here. I don't foresee that being a big deal. I think probably the most noticeable thing from the player side here is that many of them had, like basically the minimum range for their vision was increased to 45 in the daylight. So you as the player can still see far than they can, but in general, they're going to balance feral vision around that number. So for at least a couple of the ferals, that's like a 50% increase to their vision radius. And additionally, special attacks were made for the different ferals that are defined by their melee weapon. So a pipe wielding feral now has a special attack using that pipe instead of just a nebulous monster attack that they had previously. A crowbar feral gets a crowbar specific special attack. Now the cooldown on these seems to be one, which means you're going to see them all the time and it sort of makes sense they're not attacking you with like elbows to the face they're hitting you with their weapon they seem like they're just mostly to add flavor and illustrate like hey these are actually hitting you these guys use a weapon as opposed to a zombie that just batters you or whatever now i'm a little fuzzy on some of this however so if we look at the uh, crowbar ferals attack here their new special attack deals 19 bash and one 
cut, and my initial fear was that special attacks always did the same exact amount of damage, so I thought it was going to hit you for a flat 20 at all times before armor. However, apparently that's not the case. I did test this pretty thoroughly. I let my naked character get battered by these creatures. It looks like the damage is ranged. Sometimes it was 9 damage, sometimes it was 17, and so on. So that was my initial fear, but after a little bit of testing and editing this script, it seems like that's going to be completely fine. And beyond that, I really have no other concerns here. This was, just to be very clear, this was a buff to ferals in general. It's not inherently a bad thing. You will notice they are more potent now than they were before. And someone said that the melee damage that they deal was based around the player's average damage with that weapon at strength 8, but I did not see this referenced in the PR. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. Regardless, though, you are going to notice them being a little scarier than they were before. It's not outlandishly overpowered, but this overall was a buff to many aspects of ferals. And I, I think that's a wrap on the show. I don't know. Things did get away from me a little bit this week. I did not get as much done as I wanted. So I'm definitely behind. I know this video is going to be late already. Now on the plus side, I did release that indie Call of Duty Zombies game review if you haven't seen it. But you might be interested. I'll put a link to it here. And I also have a Swarm Survival Zombie type game review that's basically finished. That should come out like probably early next week. And then finally, I've been trying to review the game called Humanit Z which is like people are saying like oh this is the next project zomboid or jay-z or whatever which i hardcore disagree it's not a very good game i'm trying to put together a video but i just dislike the game so much that i'm not feeling very motivated we'll see if or when that comes out i don't know what my schedule is going to look look like here in the next couple weeks but anyway that's enough for self plugs everyone thank you for watching sorry the audio quality was not as good as it usually is hopefully you know, it didn't impede your ability to enjoy the video i'll be back in the near future with another episode and I'll see you next time.